Hello, it's Alyssa on behalf of the Kardashians, and before we get into this episode, we just wanted to make a quick little disclaimer that this episode and interview was all done before Corona became a big issue in British Columbia, so we didn't really ask any questions about how would COVID impact your business in terms of economics just because this was not a big issue at the time. So what you guys have to remember to do is as British Columbia and Vancouver starts to open back up, please go and support your favorite local restaurants to make sure that they don't get impacted negatively by the loss of being closed and they can stay open and stay with us. So with all that in mind, please sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to Behind the Food. In this segment we will go behind the scenes at your favorite restaurants and talk to the owners and the chefs to get you an inside look. Today we are at Bricks and Mortar, an upscale restaurant in the heart of Yale Town with Jennifer, the event coordinator and owner of Bricks and Mortar. Let's start at the very beginning. Why did you decide to open a restaurant? So I should say that my husband and our business partner, Patrick Mercer, they opened up the restaurant in 1999. Um, they were serving at the time at Joe Forte's and David, who is my husband, uh, was debating about whether or not he was going to go back to school. Uh, he had graduated from UBC in economics and theater, believe it or not, and then was working and managing in restaurants and um, was thinking about going back to school um, to BCIT in marketing. And at that time, they were um, serving at Joe Forte's, and Patrick said, hey, you know what, we're having fun, let's just open a restaurant. And uh, so David went and put together a business plan, and they started going around the city, looking at different spots, and just found uh, what, what was, a, like, originally a restaurant was just called Bricks, and it was the location right up there on Homer Street, you know, where you walk through the courtyard. And uh, it was called Farago at the time, and they went in and they offered uh, money for the restaurant, and they got it. One of the most important aspects of a restaurant is the name. It's what people remember, and it defines your brand. What did you? Why did you pick the name Bricks and Mortar? In 1999, when they opened, they named it Bricks, B R I X, and Bricks is kind of um, it's a measurement of the sweetness of grapes and wine. So you would say like you know I think degrees Bricks. And because the restaurant's original concept was a, like, lots of great small sharing plates and a place where people could come uh, and get a number of uh, wines by the glass, so a great variety of wines by the glass. So the theme has always been a wine bar uh, along with great food. So Bricks tied into the, the concept of wine. Um, in 2005, we did a rebrand of the restaurant um, because the space that we're actually sitting in right now, which is the lower part, used to be um, called George Lounge, which was a cocktail lounge. And it was open from 2005 until 2015. And uh, in 2015, we decided to close George and combine both spaces as one. And we kind of did a whole refresh of Bricks at that time. And we thought it was just kind of a fun play on the words Bricks, B-R-I-X, versus B-R-I-C-K, and mortar. And also because there's like we're losing more and more bricks and mortar stores, so we thought it would be a fun tie-in of both those concepts. Your restaurant is on the more fancier side and is known for like meat and drinks, so why did you decide to go that route rather than a more casual restaurant? So what we like to say is we are approachable fine dining. You know, we wanted a place where people could go for quality, nice food, and nice dinner, but it's slightly you. kind of at that three-quarter price point. So, you know, the concept is that you are, you could still dress up and go out, but truthfully, actually, we have a lot of neighborhood and community guests coming in. You know, people can come in in sweatpants and all that if they want. Honestly, the, the whole concept of having wine, and nice cocktails, and all of that generally is paired with sometimes a little bit of a nicer meal, at least traditionally it was. What has been the biggest struggle of owning a restaurant? Well, we've been open for now, um, in April will be 21 years, and the challenges have changed throughout the years. But if we were to look at what the, the largest challenges are in them currently, um, it would be the cost of things, the rising costs. So uh, labor costs, uh, you look at rent costs, um, the government's imposed so many more. Like when you. I'll use licensing costs. So, you know, we opened up uh, to have a patio permit, so to be allowed to have um, a patio on the on the street, on the 
walkway was like $400, whereas now it's $8,000. And you look at things like your business license when we opened up used to be a hundred dollars or so or a couple hundred dollars to renew every year. Now it's over three thousand dollars to renew. So when you look at minimum wages, which is great for you guys, but it's gone up. So even for servers and stuff, it you know, it used to be a lot lower, it's now thirteen, fourteen dollars. So all of these things for small businesses become very, very hard to absorb while still providing a quality and affordable you know, product and service for guests. So I, I would say costs are one of the biggest things and finding good quality um, labor. You know, we live in an expensive city, so finding people that are able to live here and work here, you know, is, is a challenge. Well, something that's really interesting for you from just a point of view, there's an article in The Sun, I think, or, or one of the newspapers recently, um, by Emad, who owns the Global Group of restaurants. You know those restaurants? Yeah, like they have one downtown. Somewhere. Yeah, they have a lot of them. And he was talking about why so many small independent restaurants, so not chain restaurants, are dying. And one of the largest things is about all the rising costs and the shrinking margins in businesses like the restaurant business. One thing that I know I personally have been curious about, so I know that you've rented your restaurant out for several films, and yes. including to all the boys I've loved before, P.S. I Still Love You. Yes. I, it's still really cool because I know the movie got like a lot of hype and I know a lot of people who liked it. So, I haven't seen the movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, why did you decide to start like renting your restaurant out for the TV industry? And do you have any fun stories about that particular cast or any other cast that's filmed here? Um, I don't have any fun stories because generally I don't pay attention when they're here. I'm in the back office. And have you been on a film set before? Not really. I've... Do you know what? It, it, it like even for a two-minute little segment, right? It generally will be two full days, and I mean, they'll have both this level with extras, that level up there, things are all blocked off, you know, you can't be, make a sound. It's not something where it's like, oh, I'm gonna get around and get to meet people, and we just stay right out of the way. Um, I mean, everyone's very nice and everything, but you're just not involved at all. Um, we've always been willing to do it, and we do do it. It's, do you know what, it's, sometimes it's a great, fun, just change it gives our staff a day off so it's a wonderful option you make some money at the time so usually they're they, we do rent them on days that it wouldn't typically bus be busy so that makes sense um, in terms of fun stories honestly I, I don't really have we've had like lots of um, I've had lots of stars in here before, you have but, I, yeah, but I don't, like, I'm not usually here. I mean, sometimes I've been here, but we don't really fuss about anything because usually a lot of people that are coming to our restaurant aren't wanting to be seen and known. So we just really respect people's privacy. Any advice for people who want to own their own restaurant or business one day? You don't want to go open a business or start a restaurant with the romantic notion of what you think, you know, it might be like, oh, I'm just gonna make some food and people will come. <laughs> like most businesses, the day-to-day -day grind of it is not the super exciting things, truthfully. You know, it is the paperwork, it's the dotting the I's, it's making sure you have licenses, it's making sure you're following rules, you're getting all of the, you know, that stuff. If you have staff, you're, you know, the payment and payroll and, even boring things like cleaning washrooms and I mean, like in our business to do events, it could be throwing, you know, cleaning up after people. But I mean, so, so much of having a business, particularly in the restaurant business, um, a lot of it is not terribly glamorous. So you, if you are deciding that you want to go into it, you just want to be mindful, that, should, that shouldn't dissuade you, but you want to be mindful that it is a lot of work. The other thing with the restaurant business is if you are planning on being in the evenings and having, you know, serving alcohol and doing that stuff, you have to think, I mean, it, they're long hours, right? They're very, very long hours. Uh, it's, you know, when you own a business, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm just gonna just go take my two weeks off, right? <laughs> no, you know, you have to, I mean, maybe if you have people that you can trust and run it, but you don't always have that. So the buck stops with you if you want to be successful. Uh, it's 
you have to be the hardest worker in the room if you want to be successful. Um, and you do really need to be focusing on the things like the nuts and bolts, the finance, the accounting. I mean, I don't care how great an idea is, if you do not have good accounting, and this is boring stuff, you won't be successful. A lot of businesses fail, not because they are not bringing in lots of, um, maybe making sales or, or doing things, but they're not collecting the money too. Right, so it, it is really important that you have a good business sense. So I would, I'd recommend going to business school, taking basic accounting, you know, all of that stuff if I was gonna open up a business. Think about what you want in your life. You know, if you are a person that wants freedom and the ability just to um, travel or go away or at a whim, certain businesses are not perfect for that type of lifestyle. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this interview with us. You can find Bricks and Mortar at 1138 Homer Street in Yaletown. Their website is www.bricksandmortar.ca and you can find them on Instagram at bricks underscore Vancouver. Catch up later!